know we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? What a corny kid, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> I did not say that. Misquoted for sure. Yo, 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 what it do, man? Bet with another vid. And this video right here is about these tweets that I've been seeing on Twitter lately. It's called the uh, Pookie versus the nerd debates. <laughs> The thugs versus the corny men in the black community. I know a lot of y'all seen what was going on with Michael B. Jordan in his video where he ran across a woman that was interviewing him that actually knew him from way back in the day. And in the video, you know, he kind of confronts the woman saying that, you know, I was that corny kid, remember? Because, you know, she said that she remember him from school. He said, I was that corny kid, remember? And this is a moment that should be very teachable to a lot of people in the black community. Y'all need to stop judging these nerds and these corny dudes like, like they not human, man. Y'all treat them like they not human. And some of these dudes, they really grew up to be important people, you know, real popular people. And so while y'all still out there looking for people, you know, looking for your soulmate, looking for your husband, and you done went through so many men, so many relationships, and you never found that one. To tell you the truth, that one corny kid, that nerdy kid, could have been that one for you. But before I get into it, I want y'all to really watch the video. And while you're watching the video, pay attention to what's being said, and really pay attention to Michael B. Jordan's body language, man. Really pay attention to that. Morning, Hustle Show. We got Michael B. Jordan, the director mm -hmm. and the star of Creed 3. And, you know, we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? What a corny kid, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> I did not say that. Misquoted for sure. No, you did not hear me say I said we used to make fun of the name. But, yeah, he is obviously killing things out here. How is the difference between you actually directing and working with the same people that you were directed with versus? Uh, it, it, was, it was awesome. You know, it's a family vibe. Yeah. Last nine, nine years of my life. Um, I spent on the Creed films. Uh, they're very supportive. You know, Tessa, uh, Felicia, Rashad, Wood Harris, people that see me grow up. Yeah. And uh, for the fact that they, I stepped behind the camera and finally got a chance to direct them, they, they, they loved it. They embraced it. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. And was it difficult for you mentally because you're coming out of a different space? I didn't, know, I didn't know he was doing the athletic I mean, I was staying in it. This is about Shaw. This ain't about me. Isn't this the sexiest man uh, right show here. off right you know here? Who's the sexiest <laughs> man? Because now let's. Kind of Who's the sexiest that? man? Because I thought you said you're on the way up. He might be the one right now. He is the one. This is the one right here. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. So is it a tie? Ain't no tie. It's we don't, we don't it's compete. Not a tie. Yeah, we don't compete. Two number ones. Technically. Batman and Batman. Or should I? Oh, no. Can't say that. Superman and Superman. Superman and Superman. Sorry. Good luck with that. <laughs> Love you, bro. Okay, so you also are going to do a new film with Will Smith very soon coming up. Is the rumor out there? Not sure. We're still working on a script. You know, that's something that I plan on doing in the future. Not sure when. You know, these movies. I'm just trying to get through this project. Right, you know, so right, get through, right. When I get finished with this one, then I'll figure out what's going on next. And how is it filming in Atlanta? It was amazing. Uh, I've done four or five films down here. Shot a couple of television shows. So Atlanta's a second home to me, and I, I love coming down here. Favorite restaurant here? Oh, uh, man. Uh, whatever hotel I'm in, their restaurant. Well, you're not corny anymore. <laughs> Alright, first off, what I want to point out, shout out to the other black man that came in and was talking to him. Shout out to him, man. See, that's what we need to see a lot more of in the black community. Is And not, not just in the black community, man, but just amongst men, period. We need men to start supporting each other more, man. When they know when they know that certain groups of men get looked at a certain way, they get talked down upon a certain type of way, they get dragged through the mud, uplift your brother, man. Don't just go along with the, the circus uh, action. <laughs> Don't just go along with the clowns. Uplift your brother. You know, be different. So, yeah, shout out to him. And for everybody that paid attention to that body language, this is the type of body language you see. You know, he got his arms folded up, and he, you know, stand, looking at the girl a certain type of way. And he brings it up. It's the first thing he brings up. Like, yeah, I was that corny kid, remember? Y'all got to understand these things that y'all do and say to these kids while they're younger, it carries with them into adulthood. These are the type of things that shape their, their minds and their personalities and how we, how they view and, and just see the world, period. Y'all just don't understand that look that he giving and the body language that he giving off. It's, it shows you how hurt 
how hurt he was, man, as to be a youngin having to go through that, being picked on all the time, being judged so harshly. It hurts. These supposed to be your peers. They your peers and they down on you. They dragging you through the mud. That shit hurts, man. And I'm trying not to cuss. That hurts, man. And it really even hurts even more when you get older and you and especially in his case when you become successful. You you become successful and you realize they know that getting that type of treatment hurts you. They just don't care until you become somebody successful. You know, everybody gets love and support in the black community, the thugs, you know, the Pookies and Ray Rays, the Tatianas, <laughs> you know, all these baby mamas. Everybody gets uplifted in some type of way. But for some reason, these corny men, the good black men, the nerdy black men, the, the things they go through, their pain that they experience, nobody cares. They look at it like until you become somebody to other people you know whites and other races of people you'll always be a nobody to us because intelligence and nerdiness and corny you know corny behavior all that is looked down upon in the black community if you act like any of that if you possess any of that you know intelligence or corny behavior any of that they will never recognize your value they will never see you as real people you know you just somebody to pick with you know that's the role that you have to play amongst them that's just who you are you know, in a in a kingdom, you got your kings, you got you got you know all these royal people. Then you got the regular people, you got your peasants, and then you got your court jesters. See, in the black community, in their eyes, the corny men, the good men, the good black men, the uh, the intelligent men, they the court jesters. They just here for entertainment, <laughs> and so they'll never understand your value, man. And so it's real important to get yourself out of those situations travel go somewhere where you are valued you know shout out to the passport bros that's a perfect example these men they they make up kind of the bulk of the men that got shunned on in the black community they getting didn't get no love they didn't get treated properly and they went elsewhere where they got better treatment <laughs> you deserve that man you deserve to get good treatment but pay attention to this tweet that i seen on uh social media they won't reform street dudes with ptsd outbursts that are lawyers, engineers, and doctors. See, what they really looking for is a black man with a controllable mind. You know, a mind that's kind of already been, you know, tainted with matriarchal ideology. At the end of the day, they just want control over a, a black man's mind that's just as broken and just as dysfunctional as hers. Because once that man put the streets behind him legitimately and for good, it's all out of his mind and he didn't really change as a person, she gone. <laughs> She gone, you know, that was the source of her excitement and thrill. That's how she got all of her thrill out of the relationship. You know, that's what made her a wet. <laughs> that's what got her that's what got her going. So yeah, she on to the next now. Another tweet said, everything that makes a black man corny makes a white man a real man. If you seen the white guys they let hit, you'd quit all that game talk and try not to be corny. Man, that is absolutely real, man. <laughs> It's so real, man. I done had so many of these black girls just straight up break my heart, bro. They break my heart. <laughs> Everything that makes a black man corny, nerdy, lame, boring, they praise that in a white man. They praise it in a white man, and they will treat him a king for that. They will treat him like a king for that. And I done seen the white guys that they let hit. Like, just recently, I had met this black girl, man. <sighs> Cute as hell. Nice body, you know, everything going on right. She got a boyfriend, right? And ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, you got a boyfriend, it is what it is. But I, I get I see the boyfriend one day. And I see this it's a white boy, you know, short white boy. He looked like he looked kind of like mentally ill. I don't, I'm not trying to talk about him, but he looked like he probably he looked like he probably could be on the spectrum. Like he really did look like he could be autistic. And I'm just thinking to myself, wait, man, the hell are you doing with this white boy? You can't pick a better one? <laughs> See, that's when I started to realize all the white boys that is better than him, you know, better, would be a better option than him. They probably just pump and dump her. She probably got pumped and dumped by at least 50 of them looking for love. She probably ran through plenty of them type of white boys. And this is the only one that would actually claim her. And so she with this white boy. <laughs> and this just looks so awkward, man. And, and I look at the relationship they have with each other. And she treat him so good, man, giving him the ultimate respect. And it's just like, like I said, it breaks your heart, man. <laughs> it breaks your heart. And I try not to be a hater, right? No, I don't look down on interrelationships. 
I don't care nothing about a black woman being with a white man, but as long as it's legit. See, I know they only with each other because this white boy, he get to, he get to fuck a bad, a bad black girl. But what the black girl get out of it is just she get to have a pretty baby. <laughs> she get to pretend like she one of these high-class black women that got a white man. And so it really don't matter what type of dude he is. He could be a good dude. He could be a good dude, but thing about it, she wouldn't give a black man like him that same chance. Not in a million years. So a lot of black dudes, man, they go out of their way to try to be swagged up, to try to be thugged out. <laughs> they try their best to be what they think black women want. But really, at the end of the day, what black women want out of you is to, it's, it's a stereotype. They don't want the real you. They don't want you as a person. They want you kind of as a like it's like a fetish, kind of like the same way they claim white girls want you. They want you in that type of way. And so unlike the white girls who going to actually treat you with respect and give you real love, they're not going to give you none of that. And <laughs> they're going to give you problems and baby mama drama. So at the end of the day, it's best that you as a man, especially y'all young guys out there, man, I'm 27, I'm still trying to get it together. But if I can go back in time, man, if I had a message to give myself and other young black men, it would be to just keep elevating. Forget all of that. You know, be like Michael B. Jordan. Have this attitude where you don't let it affect who you plan on being in the future. You know, you want to still chase greatness. Don't settle for mediocrity. You know, I hate he going through what he went through. You know, he went through a sump phase. He still want to fall in love with a black girl. That's why he went through what he went through with Laura Harvey. Sooner or later, he going to fall out of that, though. He going to start getting with the passport bros, traveling abroad. And he going to meet some real good women that's going to treat him real well. I know that. So my message is to y'all is to keep elevating, man. Keep elevating. Keep striving for, for, for greatness. And it reminds me of this tweet that I've seen. So I'm going to let y'all see this tweet. Listen, the only thing that should be on your mind is securing the bag, investing, getting in shape, and traveling. Women shouldn't even be your top five. They shouldn't even be your top five, man. Fuck them. You know, they'll come later on down the line. And if you just so happen to be handsome and you just got the motion like that have your fun <laughs> have your fun but at the same time same thing applies women should not be your top five they should not be your top five not while you're young this is a time where you build yourself up into the man that you really supposed to be i know a lot of y'all seeing all these young dudes just running through these girls and they going they going too but they <laughs> they wilding out so like i say if you do have fun you know have your fun you know, I ain't judging that, but make sure you ain't prioritizing the fun over your priorities, over what you need to get done. Make sure you ain't prioritizing the fun over these developmental, you know, skills and things you need to learn in life to create a high value man. And, and with I might buy your book.